Alrighty, welcome back. This is Aussie Gamer 17 and we're playing some more of Thimbleweed Park. You'll grab an achievement right at the start of part three and it's just for starting part three. The only thing you're getting close to cracking is my patience with you. Let's work together and I can get on with my... I mean, we can get out of this town as quickly as possible. Agreed. Okay, now you can go through all this dialogue. Let's just click the uh, first one for now. And what's going to happen is he's going to... It's just a way of getting a, a tip on what we need to do, really. What our goals are going to be here in part three. So, yeah, I, I think I'll just do the first one. Um, and then if you guys want to go ahead and do the other ones, you can. We need to identify the body using the face tron with a photo of the body and the victim's photo ID. You mean like a driver's license or passport? Or Burger Shack loyalty card recognized around the world? And now if we just click on uh, let's get cracking, we can just move on. Um, but like I said, if you wanna go through and find out what all the other clues are or hints, click on the other uh, dialogue options. Let's get cracking. <sighs> All right, so now we're finally gonna move on and you wanna make sure you're in control of Ray and you can tell that there by the blue color, switch over to Reyes and back to Ray there. And what we're gonna do is walk to County and this will be our first look at the uh, fast travel system in the game. And this is the map that we got at the end of the last video. It's gonna show you sort of an outline of um, the area and we can click on different things and our character, who, whichever character we're controlling, will sort of fast travel to the location. That's the main town where we were. That's the bridge um, where we started, where the murder was. And here we have the old circus. And we're gonna take Ray there. That's our first stop here in part three. And if you uh, try and go in the gates, you'll notice that the gates are actually locked or we can't, we can't gain access. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this clown horn and we're gonna get Ransom to come and see us. And once we speak to Ransom for the first time, we're then going to be able to control Ransom in the present day. And he'll be one of the characters that are with us for the uh, majority of the rest of the game. So take your dime store suit and good news pamphlets and stick them where the sun don't shine. Okay, and what we want to do now is just go through all of the dialogue options for uh, Ransom the Clown here. I heard you know about a body by the bridge. Jeez, no foreplay, Red? You don't beat around the bush, do you? Not my style. You can ask your questions, Toots, but I'm not saying I'll answer. What do you know about the body by the river? What body? Earlier this evening, we found a body down by the bridge. We're investigating, and I was told you might have some information for me. Nah, I heard some sirens before, but I figured they were headed for the mansion mansion. That's where most of the up stuff happens. What weird stuff do you know about at the mansion? You want to find out about the mansion mansion? You're going to have to talk to some other idiot. I keep to myself and the town folk leave me the alone. Thank I'm not about to rock the boat. I don't pay rent here and I can't go anywhere else after my ex-wife took me for everything I had. We heard you don't get along with the locals. Given my creepy clown face and Paul Jean for abusive name calling, it's not made me a popular community figure. No. But I don't need the validation of these small town losers. I'm Ransom the Clown. I was on the Tonight Show. I'm great. What do you know about Chuck? Chuck? As in Chuck, my factory is too good to make toys, Edmund. Didn't know the pompous well myself, but I knew his brother Franklin. Weedy guy, total scared to stand up to his big brother, even though the family business was in the crapper. How do you know Franklin Edmund? We were supposed to go into business together. My act was about to go bigger than Jesus. I was a hit on The Tonight Show. I was on my way to the top, so we figured why not cash in with a little merchandising. Franklin wanted to get the pillow factory into making toys, so it seemed like a good fit. 
What kind of toys were you planning to make with Franklin? Jeez, how do you get by in life without brains or beauty? Isn't it obvious? We were gonna make Ransom the Clown insult dolls. Would have been great if Franklin hadn't bailed on me and gone missing before we signed the contracts. I could have been rich by now if that little toady had grown a backbone. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. Whatever, Red. Not like I'm going anywhere, but you're not getting inside without a warrant. Now that's actually a clue that you'll need to remember for later in the game. None of the uh, agents can go inside without a warrant. Um, what we want to do now... I didn't mean to switch to Reyes. We want to switch to Ransom the Clown because now we can use him as one of our playable characters. All right, first thing we want to do is pick up the poster on the wall and that's just so that we can get to the safe behind it. And we've got a few things that we want to do, starting with opening the safe, picking up the joke book, and then under the joke book is going to be three or four pages of the joke book and we need to pick them up one at a time. Can be quite finicky using a controller to do this. There we go. And when we pick up the last page, you'll see what happens here. Come back here. Somehow it grows wings and decides to fly away out, out the window. And that's gonna be one of our objectives now is to track down that page that's got, a, got away. But for now, what we wanna do is put all the uh, remaining joke book pages into our joke book. Just wanted to stop that from, um, I guess, wobbling on me, it does distract me. Okay, so what we wanted to do was click use on each of these pages and we're gonna put them back in the joke book. If you, if, before I did that, if you had actually clicked on the joke book, um, Ransom would have made a comment that some of the pages are missing. All right, and then eventually we need to find the other one. And it says there, find missing joke book page as one of our objectives. But our next objective is to feed little, little beeper. And then we need to get a package at the post office. We need to try removing our makeup again as well. All right. Before we go any further, we also want to pick up the comic book here next to his, next to Ransom's bed. And we need to pick up the postal notice of the bulletin board here. And open the fridge as well. And we need to pick up the moldy cheese in the fridge. Now we can't use this to feed Beepus, whatever his name is, um, but we do need it to help us get the food. Now if you open the microwave, you can see a little hamster in here. This is Beepus. You could try feeding him the cheese, but he won't eat it. Um, Beeper, not Beepus. I keep calling him the wrong thing. But anyway, that's Beeper, and we've got to go find him some food. All right, so we're going to leave, and we're going to head all the way out to the uh, the showgrounds or the circus grounds, I think it's called. And all these things on the ground, they're, they're um, bits of popcorn, but we don't need to worry about those at the moment. We're going to go and get ourselves our next achievement. Head into the backstage area. And what you want to do is you want to pick up the itch cream over here, or anti-itch cream, I should say. And as soon as we've got it, we're gonna use it. And that will unlock an achievement for using the anti-itch cream. Ew, that's uh, one way of doing it. There we go, it's the itchy fingers achievement. Once again, I've just uh, put my own banner on there because um, I'd already picked that achievement up. There will be a point in the game where um, I stopped getting the achievements on my stream because I knew that I'd wanted I'd wanted to do this guide for it. All right, now what we need to do is head over here to the uh, popcorn stand and we need to pick up the popcorn bag. So make sure you grab that and now we're gonna head inside the big top. Now you'll see a rat making his way around the big top. What you do need to do is work out which hole he's coming in and out of. It'll always be just one of the holes. Um, I'm 
pretty confident that it's the hole up the top there, but it could be that hole or that hole as well. He's gonna head out um, and grab some popcorn and try and bring it back to the hole, or he will bring it back to the hole. You need to make sure he's going, um, you need to make sure you find out which hole he's going to bring the popcorn back to. And once you do, we, we need to place the moldy cheese next to the hole. And what's gonna happen is he's gonna bring back the, all the popcorn, but instead of eating the popcorn, he's gonna eat the moldy cheese and leave the popcorn next to the cheese. And we need there to be a big, big, big pile of popcorn so that we can fill our popcorn bag. All right, so we can see that it is that hole up the top here. So leave the moldy cheese there. And I guess to, to speed things up, all you really need to do is you need to leave the big top and then come back and then all of a sudden there'll be a, a pile of popcorn. The other option is to walk around and pick up all the little bits of popcorn yourself, but you don't need to do that at all. All right, so out and back in and when we head back over towards the hole, should be a whole big pile of popcorn. So you pick up the popcorn, that's all you need to do and uh, Ransom will automatically put it in the popcorn bag and you need to make sure the bag says that it is full. I don't think I'm uh, gonna check that right here. We'll check that when we get back inside because I already know that it's full. Um, it's if you pick up the single bits, it um, eventually says like half full and then full or something like that. But um, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna head back to our trailer and we're gonna go feed Beeper. Or Beep Beepus I like to call him, but his name's Beeper I think. So head back in your trailer and use the popcorn. And you'll see here it says full popcorn bag. I'm gonna use it on the hamster. On Hello. little little beeper. Enjoy your crap. Okay, now check the list and it should say that uh, little beeper has been fed. And now we're gonna work on the next item, which is to get the package at the post office. I originally thought that uh, Ransom was gonna be confined to the circus because of the curse, but no, you can actually leave. That's by going past the uh, Stilts that are still on the ground. Hi, Ray. Or Agent Ray. And walk to the country road. Now, this is we can fast travel even though Ransom doesn't have a map, but it's only for this part. What we want to do is go to the Quickie Power on our way to the post office, and we need to get Ransom one of the maps. And you'll see here that they're back at the Quickie Power um, because the sheriff, if you notice at the end of the last video, he said he doesn't need to hold onto the maps anymore and he's gonna put them back. So all we need to do here is pick up a map. And you'll see once I uh, click this here, yeah, there, there we go, that now the map is in Ransom's inventory and we can use it to fast travel. So whenever you wanna travel somewhere, just look at the map. And for example, we wanna to go to B, uh, is it B or A? A Street, I think, A Street and we need to go to the post office. So that just fast traveled us straight to A Street, even though it wasn't too far, we could have walked. Just wanted to show you guys. And we're gonna go in the post office. And what we wanna do once we're in here is we wanna give the post off, uh, the postman the uh, postal delivery note. If you have a read of it, it says that he tried to deliver us a package, but we weren't, we weren't there or something. Okay, one moment. And next time, deliver it to me in person. What do you think I pay my tax dollars for? You haven't paid your taxes in years. What do you think sorts all outgoing mail? Well, you. Okay, now what we want to do is open the package and it's got to have some um, Ransom the Clown sort of merchandise inside. There's a and we inside. Dear Mr. Clown, we hereby return your defective samples. The wallet seems to be made out of a rare endangered species of bird and the candy dispenser sparks whenever you use it. Please do not contact us again. What a bunch of wads. Okay, and we're gonna head outside of the uh, post office and we're gonna find Willie. He's the uh, old drunk man from the start of the game. Now, if you were to talk to him as, part of, as one of the agents, he's gonna tell you that he's got a wallet that he found. Um, that, so that's part of the story, but we're actually skipping that step. And he's gonna, he would tell the agents that he would swap the old wallet for a uh, Ransom the Clown wallet. He said he heard about them and he wants one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give him this wallet. 
what? Oh, ransom the clown wallet. Thanks. Here's my old one. What am I gonna do with this piece of? And the other part of the story that we missed is that the uh, guy at the uh, Quickie Mart was would tell the agents that he saw Willie's wallet had blood on it. So we've got a wallet that has blood on it. And what we want to do now, um, uh, where's the, uh, we need to go, I'm just trying to think, where's Reyes? I think he's at the Vista actually. So the Vista is down here. So we need to go meet Reyes at the Vista and give him the bloody wallet. And this is our other piece of evidence that we need for the Bloodatron or whatever it's called, the Bloodtron. So we did skip a few steps there, but it still works. All right, but we're, we're going to get to that later. For now, I want to go and start our next flashback scene. So we need to swap over to Ray. And we're going to use the map to fast travel. And we're going to be going to the hotel, which is this building down here. So just click on that and fast travel there. All right, and once you gain control again, we're gonna head inside the hotel. And the uh, news reporter lady will come and chat to us. Here too. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. All right, we just need to ask her what she means. What do you mean? Why shouldn't I go in? Because you're probably superstitious and would believe all that claptrap about paranormal activity. Oh yeah, because uh, Ray really looks like someone superstitious and acts like a someone superstitious. All right, we're going to go through the dialogue here, and this will start off our um, next doing? flashback. Well, Chuck's brother Franklin went missing a few weeks ago. Is he the body by the bridge? Nope, but this reporter's no says there's something odd about the whole thing. I'm working up a story, but the only lead I have is someone seeing him here briefly a few weeks ago. He was seen around the lobby area. Then he just vanished. Big day today. I'm meeting some promising investors. I know they'll believe in my plan to turn the dying pillow factory into a highly profitable stuffed toy factory. It can't fail. Just gotta check into a room without Chuck knowing about it. He has eyes and ears everywhere. I'll need a disguise. Also need to copy this prospectus so I can give it to the investors and keep my copy. So here we are with the Franklin flashback and as usual, sorry. luck finding some investors. Better get ready for them. As usual, he's uh, given us all that dialogue that tells us what our objectives are, but on the to-do list, we have them as well. And what we need to do is find a disguise, we need to check into the hotel, and we need to get a duplicate of our prospectus, which is this item in our inventory here. So we need to find a way to make a copy of it as well. But for now, we're gonna head into the uh, entrance of the hotel. And once inside, head all the way across to the right-hand side. Do not stop and talk to the hotel manager. And we'll find this uh, young fella playing his music and he's wearing a disguise conveniently. We need to use the uh, boom box to turn it off. If you try and talk to him, he won't be able to hear you. Hey dude, what's your damage? All right, now we can talk to him. And we need to ask him about his jacket first. Don't most jackets do that? <sighs> You're too old to understand. <laughs> and then ask him about what's on his what's face. On your face. They're the latest and greatest nose glasses from the Jason the News Guy adventure game from Mucus Flem Games. Mucus Flem Games. No one knows who I am. And ask what's on his what feet. On your feet. The latest and greatest Reeboks. I just got them. Aren't they rad? All right, and then we need to ask him about what's with all the latest and greatest. All the latest and greatest. I'm not grody like you. Everyone knows that unless you've got the latest and greatest, you might as well bark. I'm not risking my reputation by touching anything that's not like the latest and greatest. And we need to tell him that, well, what if I said you didn't have the latest what and greatest? You didn't have the latest and greatest stuff. <laughs> like, barf me out. All my stuff is totally the latest and the greatest. And we need to convince him that his glasses are not the latest and greatest so that he will uh, trade them to us. So I'm gonna click that option. Not the latest and greatest. These glasses gotta be the latest and greatest, aren't they? 
Did something newer come out? <laughs> nah, you're wigging. I can't trust a dweeb like you. And now we have to prove to him that we know what the latest and greatest is. So start here. I would totally know what was the latest and greatest. Oh yeah? I bet you don't know anything about what's the greatest right now in 1987. Prove you're not just an old dweeb from the 50s. And we're going to have to pick three... audacious because I can talk to you and... Three little uh, phrases here that are predominantly from the 80s. Um, so the first one here is going to be, I know this gnarly dude. A couple of these I would have uh, probably got right if I had to guess. And a couple I uh, got chat to help me with on the stream earlier. And they uh, informed me what was the, uh, the lingo back in the uh, 80s in the uh, United States over there. So we're going to start with, so start with, yeah, I know this gnarly dude who... Know this gnarly dude who and then we're gonna go was on MTV. MTV that was big yeah. in the 80s late 80s and then tells me what's wicked and what'll gag me with a spoon I'd never ever heard of that sort of saying before Tell but apparently that's the correct answer Whoa, you're legit. I totally believe you know what's tight right yeah we fooled him that's something new and sick I'll trade you until then I'm gonna rock out all right, so now we're going to trade in one of our teddy bears. We have to turn off the uh, boom box again. And as soon as you turn that off, make sure you grab or press give and then teddy bear and then click on him because very, very soon he would have turned that back on if we are uh, if we were too slow. Big time righteous. I'll do you a favor and trade you. You do that for me? Oh, sick. Who what do you want to trade? And make sure you choose his glasses otherwise you'll just have to use another teddy. I'll trade you the bear for your glasses, no faking. Gag me. Your glasses totally make you look like a dweeb. No, duh! Eh, take the glasses then. Quick, before anyone notices I have them. First, here's my used gum for your collection. Uh, I don't have a gum collection. Uh, never mind that. Now give me that bear so I rock it out. But sure. he, he definitely did give us the gum. Narlicious. And we are going to need it. I can't keep this up. Let's get this over with. Here it is. Sweet! Your ace! Later, dude! And now we want to check into the hotel. So we are going to use our disguise and go talk to the hotel manager. Nobody can recognize me now with this foolproof disguise. Yeah, you look completely different, Franklin. So just click on the manager to talk to him. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? All right, we'd like to check in. I'd like to check in. Okay, sir. What's your name, Abu, for the booking? And it doesn't matter what you choose here. I'm going to go with Emilio Estevez. It's probably my favourite out of that list. Of course, Mr. Estevez. We have a lovely suite, Abu, for you on the sixth floor. Your suite has been fitted with the new state-of-the-art Abu Hotel Tron 3000. It's such new technology, Abu, that we're still fitting out the rooms on the tenth floor. How else may I be a boo of service? And that's all we need for now. Don't need to ask about the photocopying just yet. But if you did ask about it, he'd tell you that his photocopier has run out of paper. Um, I'm going to look at my, I mean, your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Okay, now what you want to do is check the key card that he's given us. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, go to my hotel room is the new objective that's added in there. You want to check your key card because it is random, which... Um, Floor number he will give us. I think he said six then, didn't he? Um, but if you're not sure, you can check your key card. And what we're going to do now is start working on the next achievement, which is actually for traveling to every single uh, floor of the hotel, except for the penthouse. There's an achievement for doing that. We're currently in the lobby, so we're going to travel to the mezzanine level. And what I'm going to do for now is just work up one floor at a time on the way up to level six, which is where our room is. Don't forget that your room, if you're playing along, could be on a different floor. It seems to be quite random. It just won't be level 10 and it obviously won't be mezzanine or penthouse. So now we're uh, up to floor four. We will stop on our floor and go to our room before we continue working on the achievement. Uh, what was that? Was that four? You know, I'm up to five, aren't I? Talking and trying to do this at the same time, I easily lose count. 
All right, so there's floor five, and now one more for now. We'll go up to floor six. All right, now we're gonna go into our room. And now if you were listening, uh, the guy said that our room is on the sixth floor. And if you check your key card, it's 601, which will be over this way. And we're gonna use the key card on the door to open the door. No, not look, use. Open room 601. Hello? Yes, only on Tuesdays. Yes, I'm almost ready for our meeting. I've just got to wrap up a couple more things. I'll call you back when I'm ready. What's that monstrosity? A Hoteltron. Chuck must have had them installed recently. I'll have to find a way to stop it recording my meeting. And I still need to get a copy of my amazing prospectus. Then I could keep the original for myself and give a copy to the investors. Okay, so there he is reminding us again of our uh, updated to-do list. If you have a look, we still need to make a duplicate of the prospectus. We need to disable the camera. And once we're ready, we can call the investors. It's precious, dazzling four-page prospectus about turning the pillow factory into a toy factory. And there we go. the original. I need a copy to give to the investors. He tells us that it's a four page prospectus and we know, well, we know because I told you that the photocopier has no paper, but we pick this up and we've got one sheet of paper. And now we're gonna head out of our hotel room and we're gonna go to the elevator and we're gonna continue getting our uh, elevator achievement for visiting every floor of the hotel. And we're gonna work our way up. Now we can get some more paper on level 10 so first we're going to go to level seven, eight, and nine, and then we'll go up to floor 12 and 11, and then we're going to stop and get off on floor 10 and grab the achievement when we get to floor 10. All right, so one floor at a time. All right. There we are at floor nine. Now we're gonna skip, as I said, we're gonna skip floor 10 uh, because we're gonna come back down to it. So I'm gonna go up to floor 12. There we are. And now down to floor 11. Now, once again, you won't see the achievement pop on my screen. I'll put my own little achievement banner up. The only thing I haven't been able to test is whether or not you actually have to get out at every floor, but I don't believe so. I read a guide that said that you don't need to. Um, so now we can go to 10 and once you arrive on floor 10 your achievement should pop I guess the only other thing that you could do if that didn't work is you'd have to get out of the elevator on every floor Which would be a real pain But there we go. I'll put my um, my banner in there that I uh, designed with my achievement college Okay, now once we're here we need to pick up not there's these two photos here We only need the standard room example photo and it's basically just a photo. He's going to explain it right now when I uh, look at it. It's a photo of a clean standard hotel room. And as you can see, all the doors here on, on uh, floor number 10 are all open. It's the only floor where all the uh, doors are open. So we're going to head into th at least three rooms. And what we need to do is pick up three lots of stationery. So then we will have four bits of blank paper. All right, so just any three rooms, they all have uh, the exact same things in the room and the uh, stationery in the same spot. You will have also noticed a TV on the floor, but that's for something a lot later in the game, so we don't need to worry about that right now. All right, so we've got our four bits of paper. We can get back on the elevator. In you go, Franklin. And now we're going to head down to the lobby. I guess that's the room, uh, the floor, sorry, that isn't uh, random. It's always the 10th floor with the uh, open rooms and everything like that. Oh, Welcome back to there the he Hotel, is. Mr. How uh, may I be a of service? This time we need to ask him about the photocopying. Don't worry about the surveillance. Do you have photocopying here? 
But of course we do, Abu. Abu, Abu, Abu. That is to say, we normally do, but uh, we've run out of paper, Abu. Unless I get more paper, Abu, I won't be able to help you out. And let him know that we've got some. This is photocopying paper. That should be all the paper, Abu, I need. What would you like to photocopy? This prospectus document. Sure thing, Abu. Well, that's all I need. I'll be back in a jiffy, Abu. One task done. Now I should go to my room and prepare. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Going to head up to the room. We've got everything we need now. And we're nearly finished this flashback sequence. And we'll get another achievement for completing it as well. All right, we've got to use our key card to get back in. All right, now we've got to sort out this camera. We're going to use the gum, the sticky bubble gum on the camera. And you'll know why in just a second. Now we're going to use the photo and we're going to stick it in front of the camera. Waiting. What was that? I guess it was nothing. Looks like the Tron machines are working perfectly. Believe it or not, that's actually Chuck. No All right. Question. Perfect. Now Chuck will have no idea what I do in my meeting. I'm finally ready for that meeting. Okay. The investors a call to let them know they can come up. And all we need to do now is use the phone and that'll be the end of this uh, sequence or flashback. That's what it's called. You can come up to my room now. I'm ready. And just let this little scene play out. Back to being plain old Franklin. That was quick. Oh, it's you. How did you know I was here? And somewhere here, I'm not exactly sure where it'll pop, um, but I'll put in an achievement here for secret meeting for 15 gamer score. And that's for completing the Franklin flashback. Nobody, no Franklin. Some of the more superstitious types claim he's haunting this hotel. But those of us dedicated to fact-finding know that must be poppycock. That's an interesting story. And once again, you can go through all the dialogue if you wish to. There's some funny stuff in there, but um, I think for now we'll just end the conversation. Oh, I nearly changed my mind. All the information. See you later. If you find out anything publishable, stop by the nickel to let me know. Now, if you remember from the start of the game, we got a key card from the victim. This is it here, and it tells us the room is 909. So we need to head up to the ninth floor and go visit the victim's room. So what we need to do is open the elevator and head inside and go up to the ninth floor. Oh, I just remember what we actually needed to do is talk to the manager and find out the room that um, Franklin stayed in. But we'll uh, we'll go we'll go to the victim's room first, and then we'll have to go back to the lobby and speak to the manager. But if you haven't already hopped in the elevator, go and speak to the manager first. It will just save you a little extra step. Anyway, we're going to use the key card to get into the uh, victim's room. We really only need one thing that's in here. There's not much else in there. But you can see there where there's normally the uh, station area. We just switch on the light. And now we're going to pick up the passport. Okay, that's all we need. Now we can go back down to the lobby and speak to the manager. If you already had the key card for Franklin's room, you could head straight to the sixth floor or whichever floor it was for you. Um, it was the sixth for us. It's the same room that you had in the flashback. And the reason we can't go there is we didn't speak to the manager and get the key yet. But we're gonna to speak to him about Franklin's disappearance and then we're gonna ask him for the key. Uh, the key card, which he will give us. There we go. Most beautiful hotel abu in the tri thimbleweed Park County area. I think it's the only hotel. I be abu of service. 
All right, ask him about Franklin. It's the middle option. You know what happened to Franklin Edmund? Huh, I saw him, but I don't know Abu what happened to him. Funny thing, Abu, though. Go on. That same day, a man with a large nose, Abu, checked in and then disappeared. You don't say. That is an odd arena coincidence. What room did he check into? Oh, let me see Abu now. It was a Mr. Emilio Estevez. Sounds legit. He checked into a room, Abu, on the sixth floor. I'd like that room key for our investigation. I'm not sure I should do that without a warrant, Abu. But since there's nothing to see there, I suppose, Abu, I can give it to you. Thank you. Finally. How else may I be Abu of service? And that's all we need of him, so... I'm going to check out your, um, interesting lobby. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Alright, now you can see there, it's still the uh, same room that we had in the flashback if you look at the key card, and so we'll head up to the sixth floor. And over to room 601, use the key card again. always um the crosshair and that disappears while the elevator is either opening or closing which can be a little bit annoying and you actually only need to step in the room and then step back out to get this little scene what was all that about why couldn't they see me I'm dead hmm. well I guess that's probably what I deserve about time you joined us in the land of the almost dead. Who are you? I'm Xavier, the head ghost, and I'm in charge of the ghosts. I run a tight ship. Everyone must pull their weight or face the penalties. What do you mean, pull their weight? Don't ask. Time to update the schedule for everyone to follow. Clara, you're on elevator duty. Don't let anyone get to the penthouse. I was just on elevator duty. No arguing. Now, Virgil, keep up the good work on front door duty. Don't let anyone in or out of the hotel. It's about time the living started realizing who's really in charge around here. That doesn't seem right. That's irrelevant. New ghost, you're going to scare at least two people who try to use the drinking fountain in the lobby. Okay, everyone to work. What are you waiting for, Clara? By the way, your brother died. Chuck's dead? When did that happen? I'm free of Chuck's tyranny. That is, I know he would have come here to tell me off if he could. I wonder why this head ghost seems so bossy. I've got to scare someone? Hmm. Maybe I have special powers. Okay, and now we can actually control Franklin the ghost. He is one of the other characters that we'll be with um, for the rest of the game. All right, and here's his to-do list. And the first thing that we need to make note of is that we need to scare one person at the drinking fountain and then scare another person at the drinking fountain. And that is down in the lobby. So we're gonna head straight to the, straight to the lobby now. Also surprisingly easy. Now, Franklin the ghost can't actually push the elevator button, but he can zap it to call the elevator. For some reason, he can't just float through the floor, even though he can actually float through doors and things like that. And here we go down to the lobby. Now, I didn't show you, but if you try and go to the penthouse, Clara the ghost, or Clara, they call her here, um, will then start zapping all the buttons and you won't be able to get to the penthouse. And that's why even if you're uh, using a, uh, a live character, you won't be able to. Now here you need to just choose a chill, or splash. So I just missed it there because I was explaining um, about going to the penthouse. So just wait for the kid to come back. And whenever he's using the fountain, we need to either chill it or splash it. Um, either will scare him. I'm going to chill it. 
Here he goes. Chill the fountain, it'll scare him. So the kid's scared and leaves. Something serious, Abu, and I won't have to call our plumbers. And now we have to uh, scare another person. Now you need to find someone else to scare. Then you will have met your daily quota. I have to get back to work now. How long are you on door duty for? Until Xavier says we're all done for the day. Now, deep breath. So we're actually going to swap back to Ray. Stay focused and solve this murder so I can get on with my plan. And we're going to move her down to the drinking fountain. Otherwise, you would be waiting a very long time to uh, find someone else drinking at the uh, drinking fountain. Possibly forever. So down to the lobby with Ray. And over to the drinking fountain. Now you do have to make sure you actually click walk to the drinking fountain so that she's uh, facing it like that. And now we can swap back to Franklin. Now, deep breath. And we don't actually have to have Ray drinking from the fountain. And once again, you can chill it or splash it and you'll get the same response that we're about to get. Oop, bit far. The only explanation for that is the plumbing here is terrible. Didn't quite scare her, but... Unlike certain other agents. Sorry, that's not the reaction you wanted, is it? What I meant to say was... <laughs> oh my, I'm so shocked and startled. Please save me from myself. What's going on here, Abu? The drinking fountain is having a little moment. Oh, it's just the fountain, Abu, again? It still doesn't seem serious enough to call the plumbers, Abu. Passable, I'm surprised you had it in you. Time for another ghost meeting. Clara, Virgil, get over here now. Virgil, good work on the door. That should do it for today. New ghost, average first scares. Keep practicing. Clara, stay on elevator duty. I need some privacy. This is outrageously unfair. Why do the men get to finish for the day? Enough complaining. Do you remember what happened last time? All right, all right. Sorry about him. We don't know who put him in charge. Okay, and that's about enough um, for now with Franklin. We're actually going to swap back to Ray. And I do believe up until now, we were stuck with either Franklin or Ray, the two people that are in the uh, hotel at the moment. Um, but now we can swap to any of our characters, but we actually want to go and visit Reyes. And we want to give him the passport because he's got all the other stuff um, that needs to go to the coroner's office. There he is at the Vista, hey. hanging out with uh, Ransom the Clown. All right, so we're going to give him the passport, not the clown. Give that to Reyes. Happy to help. And now switch to Reyes. And we're going to use Reyes. We're going to head to the coroner's office. And we actually could. Uh, no, we don't. We don't have fast travel with Reyes. So we're going to go to the Quickie Mart first and grab a map. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? All right, so grab ourselves a copy of the map. And once again, we could fast travel, but uh, the uh, coroner's office or town hall, whatever it's called, is just over here. So I'm just going to walk. Probably would have been quicker to fast travel now that I think about it, but it doesn't matter. Here we are. All right, first we're going into the coroner's office. We have two items to get rid of here. We're going to put the... Oops, I didn't mean to click the map. Going to put the bloody wallet in the bloodtron. 
So click use. Put it in the Bloodtron. And we're going to get our first report. And this report's going to tell us that the blood on the wallet matches the victim's blood. There it is. The blood on the wallet matches the body's blood. 100% accuracy. Okay, and now we're going to put the passport in the Facetron. And we're just going to match the passport photo with the photo that we took of the dead body. Not sure why you would need a report to make that uh, connection, but there we go. And it's going to confirm that the body is Boris. Okay, I was just checking while this is uh, wobbling again, but... Um, Basically, we're about to pick up the Facetron report, but we still need the Fingertron report, which means we still need to locate the murder weapon and hopefully get a fingerprint off the murder weapon. Okay, don't forget to pick up the uh, identity report. There it says, photo identified as suspicious German businessman Boris Schultz. Don't know what makes him suspicious, but anyway. Now we're gonna head up to the sheriff's office before we switch back to Ray and we're gonna work on uh, getting to our final flashback. Now, you need to just notice up on top of the Arrestron, the uh, tube is now missing. Earlier in the game, I believe it was there. So, even if we tried to use the Arrestron right now, it wouldn't work. And our new objective is to fix the uh, missing tube from the Arrestron, or replace the missing tube, it should say. Okay, now we're going to leave Reyes at the restaurant. Um, we're going to need him there a little bit later on. Switch over to Ray. And we're going to head to B Street. And this is where we're going to go and trigger the next flashback. And get our final, um, our final additional character soon as well. After, after we've done her flashback, we can then go and see her in the present and um, we'll have our, our next character. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm afraid I don't have any spare change, miss. I'm a federal agent. Show some respect. So yeah, chat to this lady at the uh, bus station. <laughs> Sweetie, I'm not a hooker. I'm Lenore Edmund Mulch of the famed Pillowtronics Edmund family, and I'm waiting for my husband and son to arrive on the bus. So I suggest you treat me with a little more respect. And then we're going to ask her about the body by the river. Anything about the body by the river. Oh, sweetie. Yes, yes, yes. So glad someone is finally getting rid of it. But one does hear things, and I do have an inkling of who might be connected to this nasty business. And we're going to get her to tell us. Tell me who you think is connected to the body. Well, I hate to cast aspersions, but I suppose it is for the good of the town. Tell me what you know. Actually... No, I can't do this. The Edmund reputation is at stake. Spill the beans. Spill the beans, trust fund Barbie. Fine, it was my sister Dolores. Yeah, <laughs> there it goes. She abandoned our family and the business to become a. And here comes the flashback. And you don't. It's whatever you want to choose here. I'm going to go with pirate. Pirate. No, 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 no. It was far worse. She became. Uh oh. A video game developer. It all Horrifying. A few years back. Okay, here we go. She only wanted one thing. To be a game designer for that awful game company. Mucus phlegm. Uncle Chuck wanted something else for her, but no. She was too selfish. Only wanted to make stupid adventure games. I've got to get out of this town. Uncle Chuck wants me to program his factory computers. But I just want to design games. I wish I could get a job at a company like Mucus Flem Games. Now the only thing I have to look forward to is my favorite computer magazine. In fact, 
I should check the mailbox and see if it's arrived yet. Okay, here we are with Dolores in her flashback. And she just let us know that she's got to go check the mailbox. And if we look in her journal, we're going to see that that's one of our um, objectives. Check the mailbox for my computer magazine. The other, other two are a bit more sort of a broad. Find the ideal job and escape from Thimbleweed Park. So the first thing we're obviously going to do is go and check the mailbox. Head outside her bedroom and then down to this hall um, just down from her bedroom. Take us to the stairs and we're going to head all the way down the stairs to the front door and out to the mailbox. Out this door here. And there's the mailbox, so click on that. Hi there, George. I was just about to check the mail. Great timing. You still around, Dolores? Thought you'd have left this podunk of a town by now. Yes, hopefully soon. I'm looking for a job at a game company in the big city. That's not going to make your Uncle Chuck happy. He'll just have to deal with it. What brings you all the way out here? I have your special magazine here. Oh, I've been waiting for that. Thank you. Sure, it's what we dedicated government employees do. Walk all the way out into the country to deliver a magazine. Okay, so we've got the magazine. Make sure you have a look at it. It's Bite Me World, the best computer magazine ever. And we're going to see an ad for a job with Mucus Phlegm. It's even the same logo as Lucasfilm. It's uh, the play on the uh, play on words there. It's pretty cool. Wow, an ad for a job at Mucus Phlegm Games, my favorite game company. I hear they make movies too. This could be a dream come true. I'm going to apply. Interesting, there's a modem number to call. So we have to go and connect her computer um, to the modem number in order to uh, fill out the job application. That's basically what these uh, objectives are telling us. Anyway, we're going to head up, back up to her bedroom. That there is uh, is Dig Doug or Doug. Um, he just randomly shows up digging. You can have a chat to him if you want, but it doesn't really lead us anywhere. All right, now we need to pick up the gas can over in the background up near the stairs there. And then we need to pick up uh, some wood from this wood pile. So make sure you grab both of those items and then we'll head inside and uh, up to the bedroom and use the computer. All right, so back in the bedroom, we're going to use the computer. She'll automatically uh, do this whole connecting to the modem number. It's connecting. And it's going to start this um, I can't believe job application. Connected to mucus phlegm. Welcome to the new online mucus phlegm job application program. Just fill out your personal information and answer a few simple mucus programming questions. Then print out the application and send it to mucus phlegm. <laughs> we'll get back to you in exactly five days. What is your name? And it doesn't matter what you choose here. They're all technically correct. Thank you. What is your address? Same here. Noted. Next, what's your programming language of choice? And once again, it won't matter. The, this answer doesn't matter. And of course, I'm, I'm proficient in all of these that I know nothing about. Very ambitious. We like that. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. Okay. Question. And here we're going to get stumped. Backgrounds compressed into. And I don't re recommend taking a guess. So we're going to choose, I'll get back to you on this. And we're going to go find, this is where we find out that we might need a book that's in the library. I mucus before I answer these. I need to go find a book about mucus programming. All right. But if you just heard that, that's the doorbell. So we're going to go answer the door actually. And we'll get back to that uh, part of the quest in a little bit. Hi again, George. It's not like a government employee to make a mistake, but I forgot to deliver this important letter for your Uncle Chuck. He's busy in his workshop and can't be disturbed. I'll take it for him. Okay, Dolores. Here it is. 
And remember, it's illegal to open someone else's mail. Punishable by a $50,000 fine and or five years in jail. Thanks, George. That's good to know. Okay, back to my vitally important government job. Okay, later in this game, we're actually going to need stamps from that letter for Chuck. Um, if you tried to go and give the letter to Chuck right now, you wouldn't be able to, I don't believe. Head into this, the door under the stairs, which leads to the kitchen. Um, look around the cupboards. It might not always be in this cupboard, although I've seen it in this cupboard the most. Um, but we're looking for an empty glass. Make sure you pick up the empty glass and then use that empty glass in the sink to fill it up. But yeah, you may have to search around the cupboards if, you, if the glass isn't there. I'm not sure if it's random or not. Now we need to open the fridge. We've picked up the uh, full glass now. I uh, should have turned off that tap, that's annoying. But anyway, pick up the broken bottles of ketchup. Handling broken glass. And that's just so that now we can now pick up... Sorry, I didn't... But those Mucus Flam Adventure games treat their players much better. No arbitrary deaths just to extend <laughs> gameplay. Sure would like to work there. All right, now we can pick up the hot sauce. You can just see it behind her left arm there. Pick up the hot sauce. Okay, now we're going to open the microwave. And we're going to put inside, or use, the glass of water. And we're going to pop that in the microwave. And we're also going to pop in the letter. And then we're going to close the microwave. Yep, yep, close it and use the microwave. And when it beeps, we're going to open the microwave and we're going to pick the letter back up and the stamps will have come off and we'll have ourselves some stamps. I was about to explain that before. We need stamps, uh, I think I did say, we need them later to post our job application. So we're just sort of um, preempting that by grabbing the stamps now. And I do believe that would then also allow us to go and give the letter to Chuck. But before we do any of that, we're going to head over to the fire. We're going to put some uh, firewood or some wood in the fireplace. Sorry about that. Yep. So put the uh, firewood into the fireplace. And now what you want to do is look at the hot sauce and have a listen. Extreme chili sauce by Brian H.J. Comes with a warning. You might breathe fire. Maybe I should be careful with this. And it just so happens that we need to start a fire. So we're going to use the chili sauce, or the hot sauce, or whatever you want to call it. Glug, glug, glug. And we have fire. Now we actually need the fire to go out before we can uh, then use what we are, are trying to achieve here. So, But all you need to do is leave and come back. So head into the kitchen, then straight back out. The fire has gone out and we need to pick up the uh, black soot from the fire. Where once again, we're preempting something we're gonna need um, a little bit later. So we're gonna need that later. We've got the stamps and the soot. So now we can uh, continue on and we're gonna go to the library now. And we're going to use the Indextron, I think it's called. Indextron 3000, and it's going to tell us mm, where to find the Mucus Phlegm book. Because you'll see this is a very, very big library. And we're going to find section 3.1 to find the Mucus Phlegm book. Now, if you uh, look at this sign, it says it out, of out of order. And if you try and use the stairs, the sign says she won't go up. To fix that, which actually took me a little while to figure out, just pick up the sign. No one will miss this out of order sign. And now you can go up the stairs. The Simple as that. On, so it's obviously fixed. And the reason we're going up the stairs is because time. section 3.1 is up here. Alright, head all the way to the far left and you'll find 3.1. It's pretty simple, you can see all the numbers are in order here. And now you just got to find the uh, Mucus Phlegm book. Mucus Programming Primer is the book we're looking for. Um, but at first I have to click pick up before I can uh, interact with it. All right, there, pick up Mucus Primer, uh, Mucus Programming Primer, say that five times fast. 
Make sure you have a look at it. Now, take a photo of this or write it all down. Probably the best to take a photo of your screen, not of my screen. Your answers in this book or your information in this book on these pages can be different to what I've got here, but you definitely need to know everything in this book. Um, I guess you can look at it again later if you can't take a picture of it, but I found it very easy to just photograph the screen, which is what I'm doing right now. That's why I'm just leaving this here. Okay. But um, yeah, all the information and the answers to the job application questions are here on these two pages. Now what we're going to do is grab another achievement. Once again, I already got this um, on my stream as I was sort of uh, still playing through the game thinking that I was not going to do a guide for this game. Um, it wasn't long after this I decided to make the guide though. Uh, what we're going to do is we need to read 100 books. So I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. Check this out. Most of the books in the library were written by our backers and supporters. They assume all responsibility for their content. So I think this is a really, really, really cool addition to the game. Um, and the fact that they added a, an achievement where you have to read 100 of these books um, just gives the backers even more um, visibility, I guess. It's really, really cool. So what we're going to do is work our way from left to right, reading as many books. It doesn't matter if you miss one or two here. There's way more than 100. Um, I'm not going to do it all right now because I've already got the achievement. I'm just going to open a few. You do need to make sure you open the cover to the actual inside of the book itself and then you can back right out. Obviously, you don't actually physically have to read them all. And we're just going to pick a few and then you're going to work your way to the next section and then to 3.3, 3.4 and so on. If you get all the way to the end of the top floor and you still haven't got it, you can head downstairs and read some books downstairs. But I got the achievement somewhere about here. When I got up to, no, not, not the far end, I never got to the far end, somewhere next to the stairs there um, is where the achievement popped for me. And I'll just put my little banner in there to remind you what it is. And um, I believe it's 50 gamer score for reading 100 books. All right, back out of the library and we can go back up into, I nearly forgot her name, Dolores's room. And now we want to use the computer again. Make sure you've got your uh, answers ready. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question, what are room backgrounds compressed into? So then you just find the um, answer in the uh, text that you've hopefully got there. Mine is character sets. Next question. When the screen scrolls, it moves by... Moves by eight pixels, yeah, according to my notes. Next question. When a game ships, it is encrypted using... Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah. XOR encryption. Next question. What type of files are compiled scripts packed into? MFL is the answer on my notes. So once again, just remember these answers can be different for you. Thank you for taking the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Congratulations, you passed the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Yay! And some of the yes, questions will even be different. Correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. Okay, and you'll notice the uh, printer thingamajiggy doing its thing there, but it has actually, if you picked up that paper, it's actually blank because it has no ink. So we are gonna go and make ourselves some ink. We've already got uh, one of the ingredients for the ink, or two of the ingredients, sorry. But we need something to mix the ingredients in. So head all the way over to the right, and this is Chuck's workshop. Franklin, you idiot. I'm just trying to, you know, help. Attempt to go in and you'll, you'll get this little scene. Don't gag me. I hope my dad and Uncle Chuck aren't fighting again. And since most of the machinery at the pillow factory is lying fallow, I've come up with this, you know, great plan to repurpose them. We can use them to make, you know, plush toys. Franklin, you idiot! The company is Pillowtronics, not stupid plush toytronics. We <laughs> make pillows! What do you think that would do to our credibility, our reputation? 
Okay, Chuck, you're right, but um, I was up all night working on the business. He's plan, such a pushover. Yeah, you could just, you know, look at it. No, no, no! It's a pillow factory. Are you two fighting again? I'm getting so sick of this. Your brothers, take a chill pill. You started the pillow factory together. Won't you ever stop fighting about it? Nothing you need to worry about, Dolores. Uh, right, Franklin, old brother? Ah, yes. You know, your uncle and I were just, uh, you know, talking business. I have some work to do. Dolores, can you get my 0.8 millimeter point tip soldering iron? You know, Uncle Chuck, you should use a 2 millimeter flat tip and you never heat your solder hot enough. <laughs> That's my favorite niece. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory. I know you'll keep the Edmund pillow dream alive. Oh, I don't think he's going to like us soon. Anyway, we need to give him his letter. Uncle Chuck, I have something for you. What is it, Dolores? A letter George the Postman just delivered. Oh, I've been expecting this. I hope it's good news. You'll hear all about it when you take over the pillow factory, Dolores, my dear. And now we're going to get what we came here for, which is picking up this empty ink bottle over here. So grab that, and now we're going to use it with the black soot, or use the black soot with it, by putting that in, into the ink bottle. And now we're going to mix in the gas, or the gasoline, whatever you Americans would call it. The ink bottle is now full of black ink. I'd call it petrol or fuel. All right, so now we've got some black ink. Head all the way back to our bedroom. All these other doors are just like little trick doors. You go in one, you end up coming out another one, and I'm pretty sure it's all random. Uh, head to the left, Dolores, what are you doing? And into our bedroom. And now we're going to use the black ink with the uh, Printron thingamajig. That should do it. The ribbon is now fully inked. And now use the computer. You don't need to move the paper and get it back in position. It'll do it itself. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. There we go. It's going to reprint it and the uh, fandangled machine's even going to put it in an envelope for us. There we go. And it's even going to type the address on the envelope. Now I just need to stamp the envelope. Beautiful. And this is where you might have figured out, oh, I need stamps. Uh, but we've got the stamps already. So we're going to put the uh, stamps on the envelope. My letter to Mucus Flam is now stamped and ready to mail. I'm not sure how you get those if you've already given the letter to Uncle Chuck or if it's possible. I haven't really tested all that out, but it doesn't matter. We're going to head out to the mailbox. This took me forever to figure out where to post the letter. Um, cause we couldn't, I actually was trying to leave the, um, I was trying to head into town and find a, a mailbox or something, but apparently you just put the letter in your mailbox. Shout out to Beaky on chat who thought I was silly for not realizing, but, um, usually that's where I get mail, not where I send mail. All right. And then automatically we're waiting five days, which thankfully in the game of video, uh, in the world of video games takes about five seconds. A letter for you. Oh. <laughs> and Dolores Good didn't luck. move. See ya. In the front green. Okay. <laughs> Dick Doug's still in the same spot. He'll move around. Sometimes he's even digging inside. Now, if you try and open the letter, Dolores will say she wants to go to her bedroom to open it. So that's where we're heading. All right. Up we go. And now we're going to try to open the letter again. Now that I'm in my room, I'm still so scared to open it. And all you have to do here is keep trying. You can do it. Okay, but if it's a no, that means I'm stuck in Thimbleweed Park and have to take over the pillow factory. Okay, but if it's a Just yes, keep going until she opens it. Dad, stuck here alone with Uncle Chuck. 
Okay, but... Okay, okay, I'm opening it. Yes! It's a job offer for Mucus Phlegm to be a game programmer. I'm so excited! Can't wait to tell Uncle Chuck. He'll be so proud. I don't but think he will first... be. First, she's got to do her little victory dance. And as soon as you're sick of the victory dance, which I am already, just uh, click anywhere. And that'll make her stop. And now we're going to go out. And we're about to finish the flashback. We need to go and tell Uncle Chuck, Uncle Chuck our news. But I don't think he's going to be as happy as Dolores is expecting. Going to get a bit of a nasty surprise, I think. All right, in we go. And all you need to do is talk to Uncle Chuck. Hello, my favorite niece. And then tell him about the job offer. Uncle Chuck, Uncle Chuck, great news. Yes, Dolores, what is it, my dear future leader of Pillotronics? I, uh, here, read this. You're what? You're giving up the opportunity to run Pillotronics to be a... to be a... game programmer? Yes, that's what I've always wanted to do. Not run Pillotronics. I'm leaving on the first bus out of Thimbleweed Park. Then, Dolores, you are out of my will. You're mm -hmm. giving up over ten million dollars. That's twenty million in 2017 dollars. Just to pick an arbitrary date in the future. You are dead to me. Dead to me. And there we go. You get an achievement somewhere around here. Out of the will. Murder simulators. Real life murder is the next logical step for her, sweetie. Stop her before she schemes her way into sweet Uncle Chuck's inheritance. Sure, we'll get right on that. I'm sure you have cats to feed, sweetie. Chat. All right, so that's that. Now, before we can actually um, control Dolores again, we actually need to go and visit her. So we're just going to use Ray to go over to the mansion. It's this uh, spot all the way on the far bottom right hand side. You see the little figure making their way across. It's a cool little way to do fast travel, I reckon. All right, now we're going to head inside and up to the front door. Try and go in the front door anyway, and she'll ring the doorbell. We just need to start a conversation with Dolores. Hello, how can I help you? Federal agent. Federal agent. Doesn't really matter what you say here, anything, but I'm going to stick to the storyline. What do you know about the body by the river? I'm sorry, this isn't a good time to chat. So, if you'll excuse me, I need to talk to my sister about the will reading before heading out. She's waiting for me in the library. Well, okay. Just don't leave town. Alright, and that kicks us back out automatically, but now... I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can do what I need to do. Press the triggers until we get to Dolores again. Alright, check her journal and we'll see her objectives. Find out what happened to Dad. Practice your ASCII tables. ASCII, I think, is the way they pronounce it. And go talk to... Lenore in the library. All right, so we're going to head straight to the library now. In we Where go. Where have you been, Dolores? We're all here waiting for you, so we can start the reading of Uncle Chuck's will. Take a chill pill, Lenore. I had to answer the door. It was one of those federal agents. I don't care if it was the flippin' Pope. Let's get on with it, sister. I want to know what I got. Wait, I thought you said everyone was here. Where's the lawyer? I don't know. I thought he was coming with you. <sighs> oh, Lenore, you're useless. Mm -hmm. Has anyone tried calling him? Well, maybe if you hadn't left town and broken Uncle Chuck's heart, we wouldn't need to call a lawyer to read a will. This is all your fault, Dolores. Such a piece of work, that uh, sister. Anyway, one of our objectives is to talk to, to oh, Lenore, so let's uh, do that. Let's try again. And just go through all of her dialogue here. Lenore. Unfortunately. Dolores. If you came for the will reading, you might as well leave now and save yourself the disappointment. 
Uncle Chuck had a new favorite niece before he passed. <laughs> also, have you called the stupid lawyer yet? I want to get the will read and see how little Uncle Chuck left you. Would it kill you to help out a little? I wasn't the one who abandoned the family. I was always there for Uncle Chuck. So it's time for you to finally lift a finger and help out. Oh, gag me. All you were ever there for was a handout from Uncle Chuck. Oh, Dolores, I won't shed one tear for you when the will is read and Uncle Chuck left everything to me. So Uncle Chuck really hated me? Can you flip and blame him? You broke his heart when you left to become a you-know-what. A game developer? Oh, shh, shh, shh. Do you want the whole house to hear? Is my career really that shameful? Oh, hell yes, sweetie. Then what do you tell people I do instead? We just tell people you went to rehab. It's better for the family name. You tell people I'm a drug addict? Better they think that than know you chose to make those mind-corrupting murder simulators for a living. For the last time, Lenore, I don't make murder simulators. Oh, sure you don't, sweetie. Ugh! You know what? I don't care. Tell them whatever you like, you grody poser. But this makes us even for the time I used your homecoming crown as a conductor in my homemade generator. Do you know anything about Dad's disappearance? Dad probably ran off to hide somewhere. It's amazing that Dad and Uncle Chuck were cut from the same genes. One a powerful leader and the other, well, uh, spineless. Don't talk about Dad like that, Lenore. You're so cruel. How is Chuck Jr. doing? Chucky is thriving. Some people say he's a brat, but those people just don't recognize his blossoming leadership abilities. No doubt picked up from Chuck Sr. because he certainly didn't get them from his father. How are things with Peter? Fine. Just peachy. I can't believe we've only been together 20 years now because it feels like a flippin' eternity. I think we're done here. I'm not sure if we had to go through all that dialogue, but because it's one of our objectives, I just made sure we did. Um, I didn't want to change anything to what I did in um, my other run through the game. All right, we're done here in the library for now. We've got some more objectives. We need to find the lawyer. Let's have a look at the journal. We need to get the lawyer to read the will. We need to practice our ASCII table still, and we also want to find out what happened to Dad. For now, we're going to head to our room. But we pretty much have free room now. We can go all over town. Um, and while we're here, this is the ASCII table up on the wall here. So we're just going to go and look at that to knock off that very strange objective. But anyway, I don't know what the... Uh, I mean... It's my handy ASCII chart. Never know when you'll need to decode binary messages. So I always practice every day. We do need to decode a binary message later, but I just felt that it's weird that they put it in there now, like when we don't really have a reason for it yet. We don't know that yet anyway. All right, while we're in uh, Lenore's room, we wanna pick up a few things um, that we're gonna need later. We're not gonna need them in this particular um, chapter, but pick up the trophy and pick up this um, Susie Boy's Red Gel Decoder. I'm not going to go into any detail on those just yet, but we do need them later in the game, so may as well grab them now. And there's also a few things that we need from Chuck's workshop. <laughs> See, there's Dig Doug digging, digging in the uh, halls. So head all the way to the right into Chuck's workshop again. It feels lonely without Uncle Chuck around. You can flick on the light if you want to. And we've got a few things to pick up while we're here. We're going to pick up this receipt on the desk. We're going to pick up Chuck's journal from the desk. Now we need to open this um, check register. She won't take it with her. We need to open it though. And then we need to pick up the, uh, I think it's a check stub or something 
from the book. There we go. These are all items that we're going to need later on. Um, some now, some later. And now we need to pick up a large vacuum tube. Now that, we already know we need that. That is for the Arrestron machine. All right, now you need to push this painting over here. I think you can use it or something as well and it'll have the same effect. Um, and it reveals a safe, but also this key here. We can pick up the key. Now the safe, if you click on it, it'll tell you that it's um, a fingerprint reader to uh, unlock it. I think it's it, a fingerprint reader there we go. To open the safe. It only works for Uncle Chuck. So we can't do anything about that right now. I think we've got everything we need in this room for now. So if you've got all the same items, make sure you do, and then we can leave. And just gonna grab a couple other things before we leave the mansion. Heading all the way downstairs, there will be, oh, there's Doug, he's just moved a little bit. There'll be a little bit of a soot back in the fireplace. And we need to make sure we grab that. We don't, whoops, we don't need to start a, start a fire. I didn't mean to click on the journal. We don't need to start a fire this time. Now be very, very careful if you've got this problem. There's a speck of dust there. We do not want to pick that up. No, thank you. Tricky game. Great. Now I'm carrying around a handful of black soot. I could see accidentally picking that up. Anyway, that's it for in here. We can head out the front door. We need to grab the gas. Do not forget to grab the gas here in the front yard. <laughs> oh, that she was just saying hi to um, Agent Ray. Another speck of dust there that we don't want to accidentally pick up. Okay, we want to go and fix the arrest Tron. Um, but before we do that, we'll visit the Quickie Power and grab a map for Dolores. She doesn't have one yet. And there's one other thing. Now, if we went straight to the Sheriff's Office and tried to fix the arrest Tron with the vacuum tube that we have, it would tell us that we need a special tool. And if you happen to look at the receipt that we picked up... Can I help you find anything? Yeah, we're just here for the map. Thanks, mate. Yeah, if you looked at the receipt that we picked up from Chuck's desk, it's for a uh, tube puller tool, um, and it's from the electronics store. Now, we've walked past this electronics store in town a few times. It's completely shut down um, and not operating anymore, but we do know a tube store. So we're going to go down B Street here, and we're going to go to, to uh, Ricky's Cakes, um, which is now a tube store, and we're going to show her the receipt and see if she can help us out with the uh, tool that we need. Talk to Ricky. It's or before that, from the town's electronic store. there's the receipt. Puller paid in full. And if we, uh, <laughs> at some point we're gonna talk to her, there we go. Oh, let's go over to the counter. She's just hard to get sometimes to click on. Hi, Ricky. All right, and tell her we have this old receipt and see if she can uh, help us out. Here's an old receipt. Know anything about tube pullers? Hmm, I seem to remember a tube puller that we got from Smart Buy Electronics. We bought up all their inventory when they went under. How convenient. So that she just mentioned that, that same shop that we are. Uh... Top of the line tube puller. Your uncle always bought the best. Yes, he did. Thank you, Ricky. So somehow that receipt uh, allowed us to grab that tool off her or she's just uh, being generous. So now we want to go to the sheriff's office. Could fast travel there now that we've got the map, but it's just down here. So we'll just walk there. And you may remember that we left Reyes at the sheriff's office. We want to make sure that we give him this gas bottle as well. He needs gas for his chainsaw, believe it or not. All right. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to use the uh, vacuum tube on the Arrestron. There we go. So anywhere there will do. That should fix it. <laughs> Freyaz is in the way a bit. It's a bit uncomfortable. All right. And now make sure you give him the gas can. Yep, give gas can to Reyes. And now we're gonna swap to Reyes, eventually. 
I never know which way to go or anything. But there we go, we are now rares. And we are, have got gas for our chainsaw. Technically we could have put those uh, reports in the Eurostrom, but we'll wait till we've got the third one. So fast travel to the bridge. We're headed all the way back to the sewer entrance where the murder took place actually. Now past where we picked up the chainsaw. <clears throat> And we need to cut down this old tree so that we can gain access to the sewer. So use the gas with the chainsaw and now use the chainsaw on the tree. It <laughs> just pulls it out of his pocket. I like that. Okay, now when we go into the sewer here, it is not random. The paths are not random. So make sure you go exactly where I go. We are going into the sewer to look for the murder weapon. Um, it can be a bit of a maze in here. Um, there's lots of different tunnels and things like that. I'm going to show you exactly where to go. So once we're in here, um, use this uh, light box or open it, I think you could push. Um, and then use it again to turn the light switch on. Just so that we can uh, at least see a little bit where we're going. And head over to your right. And into the first tunnel. It's the only way to go at this stage. And now head right again. And I was just checking my notes there. All the way to the end. Nope, nope, nope. Do not go in that tunnel. All the way to the very end. Not in that tunnel either. And then through the tunnel at the end. Okay, you should be on Main Street now. You can see that sign there. And we're going to head to our right. And the first tunnel we come to, we're going to go into it. So you're on A Street now. That, that's the sign up here. All right, head to your right again. Just being careful that I don't miss anything. And the first tunnel we come across, head in there. And then there's only one option here. So head through this tunnel here. And over to our right again. I hope this is easy to follow. Through that door and then once again, we've got a, another door or tunnel as the game calls it. And there we are. We have found the murder weapon, which is the ice pick just there. We can't take anything else. We can take the mushrooms, but I think they're a bit of a red herring. And there's a bit of a clue to that there. If you actually clicked on those garbage bags there, they, they actually tell you that they're red herrings. Um, either way, just grab the ice pick. And now we can fast travel out of here so you don't have to remember how to get back. And we are going to fast travel back to Main Street. And from here, do we want to go in? No, actually, we don't need to go into Town Hall just yet. Let's just leave Reyes out here on the street. Okay, we need to switch to Ray because Reyes has the murder weapon and we need to get a fingerprint off it, but Ray has the fingerprint kit and we, we need her back on Main Street anyway, so we're going to move her back to where Reyes is and we're going to give Reyes the fingerprint kit, but if you remember from the start of the game when we picked up the fingerprint kit, it Still mentioned my way. that the kit something. was missing fingerprint tape. So we're also going to have to go and get some fingerprint tape or something to substitute for that. So give him the fingerprint kit and then switch to Reyes. And now we're going to go to the post office, which is down A Street. No, no, not Nickel News. There we go, into the post office. Now you do need to talk to the postman. So have a chat to him and we've got one thing we need to tell him. I'm pretty swamped right now. How can I help? We need to tell him that we're a federal agent. I'm a federal agent. Know anything about the body out by the bridge? You're a federal agent. I yeah, that's the important part. As one government agent to another, I'll do what I can to assist. Okay, now we can just leave the conversation. You can go through the dialogue if you wish. But we've done the important part. Thanks for your help. 
We'll be back if we have any more questions. Now, there's some sticky tape on the counter here. If you tried to pick up the sticky tape before telling him that you're a federal agent, he wouldn't let you pick it up. But we're going to pick it up. What I mean is the postman would have stopped us. That tape is for official government business only. But since you're a fed, just go easy. We're almost out of it. See, there we go. So we're going to take some uh, sticky tape. And that is going to allow us to use it with the fingerprint kit. So first use the fingerprint kit on the weapon and then use the sticky tape on the weapon to get ourselves a fingerprint off the weapon. There we go. All right, now believe it or not, we have everything we need uh, to get us the three reports and then put the three reports into the uh, restaurant. We are nearly at the end of this part. It's been a very, very long um, section of the game and I'm making it all into one video. Um, so we, the first video covered parts one and two and video that is called part two covers part three of the game. So hopefully it's not too confusing. Um, but I, I thought the, the um, first part was way too short to have just that as a video. That's why I've done that. Okay, so we put the fingerprint into the Fingertron. And we print out our third report. Now we, now Reyes has all the reports. There we go. The fingerprint on the murder weapon belongs to Willie. Sorry, I, um, let me look at that again. I didn't mean to back out of there. Willie T. Wino. And he is the drunk guy that had the bloody wallet. So it's not looking good for uh, old Willie. And we're going to head up to the Arrestron and put all the three reports in there. And it's going to spit out an arrest warrant. All right, let's do this. We've got the tube in there. Everything should be working. And we need those three red lights to turn into three green lights. And Dolores is just going to hang out here while we do this. All right. Um, now, once I do do this, the uh, I guess the part's going to end and it's going to be the end of the video, guys. So what I want to do is thank you all very, very much for watching. There is going to be some cutscene and you're going to need to choose some dialogue and there's going to be some funny stuff. So don't end the video here. Um, but I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Post in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and I respond to each and every comment that I get on YouTube. If you're not already uh, following me over on Twitch, make sure you do that as well. Um, I do stream a lot of these games and uh, all my um, practice runs of certain uh, achievement guides and things like that are being streamed over on Twitch. There's a link in the video description. One final thing is um, I also have a Patreon page where you can choose to go over there and support my channel and help me uh, improve everything just as I uh, start putting these reports in. Um, you can join Aussie's Army for just $1 over on Patreon. Uh, I do need that support there if I want to continue to do this, guys. But um, anyway, enough shameless plugs. Let's put this final report into the Arrestron. Thought it was going to take off for a minute there. Have we here, Reno? Yeah, we've done your work for you, Sheriff. Reno's actually solved the murder. I'll take that. Let's see what it says, Reno. I don't trust this Sheriff. Ah, Willie T. Wano. Just as I suspected, Reno. Yeah, I'll be right back. And that's not a spoiler, guys. I don't actually know. I did stop my other playthrough before we got to the end. What? Come with me, Areno. Well, Willie Areno, what have you got to say for yourself? I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, Areno? These feds will break you. You want to close this case, Areno? Have at him. Do you think we should play good cop, bad cop? What else would we play? <laughs> this is funny. I'm definitely going to choose to be bad cop because uh, Reyes wouldn't know how to be bad cop, I don't think. I'll play bad cop. 
And you'll see evidence of that in just a second. I'm the bad cop. And she's the good cop. <sighs> You're not supposed to tell him. <laughs> Oh, I'm not good cop, bad cop. Well, it worked. I did it, I did it. I killed the man by the bridge just to watch him die. Okay, now it doesn't really matter what you do here. Um, once you choose that bottom option, that will end this uh, whole section of the game. But I'm going to go, I'm going to show you all of these um, confessions. So I'll just let this play out for a bit. And I will catch you all next time. Anything else you want to confess to? I'm Jack the Ripper. Anything else you want to confess to? I took the beef. Anything else you want to confess to? I'm the Zodiac Killer. Anything else you want to confess to? I, I killed Jimmy Hoffa for the mob. Anything else you want to confess to? I was the mastermind behind the Amsterdam Diamond Heist. Anything else you want to confess to? I left the toilet seat up. You monster. Anything else you want to confess to? I, I caused a Three Mile Island meltdown. Anything else you want to confess to? Chernobyl was also me. Anything else you want to confess to? I designed the O-ring. Ooh, too soon. Yeah, too soon. Show some respect. Anything else you want to confess to? I was the one who really shot Greedo. Anything else you want to confess to? I was the shooter on the grassy knoll. Anything else you want to confess to? I was Amelia Earhart's unlicensed airplane mechanic. Anything else you want to confess to? Nope, I, I think that about covers you. Okay, so I left those in for your own entertainment. I hope you th found those uh, some of those funny. Enough to lock you up for life. Click that option and that'll be the end. You'll get an achievement somewhere here um, for solving the murder, in uh, air quotes, because I don't believe it was Willie. And we'll let this little scene play and that'll be the end. So I'll, uh, I'll sign off again, guys. Thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you all next time. That's not such a bad place. I learned a lot from working with you, Agent Ray. Yeah, I'll look you up if I'm ever at the home office in Albuquerque. Uh, there is no home office in Albuquerque. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs>